And I'll read verse 4. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beast, beside the free will offering for the house of God that's in Jerusalem. And then we see, then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin, goes on and so on and so forth. Let me ask you a question. When do you think Ezra chapter 1 and verses 1 through 4 happened? Take a guess. First year of the king of Cyrus. First year of the king of Cyrus. Okay. When did Daniel have his... Um, let me, oops, I'm having trouble keeping my place in the scripture tonight. When did Daniel have this vision? First year of Darius. First year of Darius. Well, I believe that as Daniel is fulfilling and completing this part of prophecy, that the 70 years um, ended when, Cy I believe they ended for Daniel, when Daniel prayed and said it's been 70 years. I don't know all the dates, and nobody knows exactly because of this. We don't know, based on this prophecy, whether or not the 70 years began at the time Daniel prayed, or the, the um, 70 weeks of Daniel began at the time that he prayed this prayer, or if they began at the time that Cyrus declared uh, Israel to be free. And, and when Cyrus didn't just declare Israel to be free. He said, go back and build the temple. And he said, everybody that doesn't go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple, he declared the God of Israel to be the God of all living. I said, God's given me every kingdom of the world, but he is God. And it's because he's given me. Cyrus is an interesting individual, wasn't he? I think that he was probably a believer. And um, he acknowledged the God of Israel and said, rebuild the temple. That's where God dwells. It's the city of Jerusalem. It's the city of God. And he ordered that anyone who didn't go back to Jerusalem would help to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. And so let me say some things about the 70 weeks of Daniel to you tonight that I think will be helpful to you. You don't know exactly when they began or when they culminated, and nobody does. I've looked at some very good arguments for a lot of different things. I've looked at arguments that they began when Daniel prayed. I've looked at arguments that began that they began when Cyrus declared that Jerusalem should be rebuilt. Uh, folks have said when Nehemiah went back to rebuild, when the temple was rebuilt, and they prayed and prayed about fire coming uh, down from heaven, uh, or when when the Holy of Holies was restructured and rebuilt. And the question is, when did it happen? And the answer, when when the seventy weeks of Daniel happened, is is kind of unclear. The the question that's really important is. Was the prophecy of Daniel chapter 9 fulfilled? And what was the prophecy of Daniel chapter 9? There's, it's twofold and it's about one thing. The Messiah. The Messiah. What's he, what about him? He's going to die. He's going to be cut off. Why? For the sins of his people. For the sins of the people. In other words, the Messiah is going to come and take care of the sin problem. What's the second thing that's prophesied about the Messiah? He's going to come and He's going to rule and He's going to reign. And here we find that even before uh, these events had culminated, that many individuals would have understood what they were. Uh, let's look, if we will, to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And I'd like to read um, verses 25, uh, maybe a little bit before 25. Um, well, we're reading 25 down to verse 38. Um, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Now, from Simeon's perspective, what is the consolation of Israel? It's the Messiah. It's the Messiah. And what was the Messiah going to accomplish? Okay, and so he's looking at what prophecy? Perhaps Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. What else? Daniel 9, potentially. Daniel 9. I believe that based upon what Simeon was looking for, well, let's read it here. It was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death, 
before he had seen the Lord's Christ. If the 70 weeks prophesied in the book of Daniel prophesied seeing the Lord's Christ, when is it possible that the 70 weeks were fulfilled? Around Jesus' birth. Around Jesus' birth. Now, let me ask you a question. Based upon how God does things, would it be generally about, you know, within a couple years of the 70 weeks? Exactly. It'd be exactly. Okay, let me ask you a question. What's the day Jesus was born? I've seen so many dates for the time that Jesus was born. The only thing I know is that it was on December 25th. And you can say, Pastor, I don't believe that. I do. I got good reason to believe that Jesus was born on December 25th, but I don't know what year. Uh, there's a lot of nonsense about that, and I'll tell you where the, where the origin of it is. It's an attack on celebrating Christmas. It's where people try to say that Christmas is a pagan holiday, and the only reason we celebrate Christmas is because it's been paganized and the origin of it was pagan as well as the origin of Resurrection Sunday and so on and so forth. Um, I'm not going to argue with you. There is very poor evidence on the behalf of it. All those arguments have come up in the last couple, like hundred years. They're new arguments. Uh, Christians weren't unclear about Christmas or uh, Resurrection Day. It, it hasn't been unclear uh, until just in recent history. And we're so smart that we think that we've come up with all kinds of things that people never knew before. And we're the generation of, um, well, I guess every generation thinks they're wiser than anyone before them. I've seen both sides of the arguments. I've seen people say, no, Christmas was not on December 25th. And the only thing they can offer as an alternative to December 25th is uncertainty. I've had people say, no, they weren't born. Jesus uh, was not risen again on um, Easter Sunday. The only thing they can offer uh, for solid evidence of when Jesus Christ is risen is uncertainty. And I want to ask you the question. You just think about this from a faith perspective and get out of your stinking worldly wisdom. I'm telling you, we're so much more interested in knowledge that puffeth up. I'm telling you, knowledge doesn't puff up. When you come with somebody, they've got something smart that all it does is destroy your faith. You ask yourself where it ends up and you ask yourself where it came from. I'll tell you where it came from. It came from Satan and it ends up in uh, not worshiping God. It ends up in you in atheism or in uh, coming up with an alternative to simply believing. And I'll tell you something. You can, you can think you're as smart as you want to and I'm as dumb as you want to just because I simply believe. But I... Um, I'd rather simply believe. You say, Pastor, you're just going to be ignorant. I'm going to tell you something. There's a logic in faith. There's a logic in faith. I'll, I'll tell you why I believe that the Bible is Scripture. It's not because I don't have any evidence of it. I've studied it. I believe the evidence is for that this book is inspired and it's perfect and it's preserved. But I'll tell you why I believe it. Because of the work God did in my heart. And it begins with faith. That's how I got saved by faith. I never got saved because I was smart enough to believe the truth. Friend, there are so many good lies out there. Any one of you can be deceived by it if you think that you're smart enough. Your brain's not... You have a high view of your intellect and a low view of the regeneration of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit in the hearts of a believer. And ultimately, at some place, you've got to come to a place in your life where you have to trust. You say, well, I don't have all the answers for it. I don't know all that. But I want to tell you something. Everything in this book is attacked and documented with an attack. Worshiping the Lord on the Lord's Day is attacked. And there's all kind of evidence offered for it. Worshiping um, the... Uh, the ep you just take any doctrine of the Scripture and every doctrine of the Scripture is attacked with documentation of it. And everything that a Christian believes, they'll try to say, well, it originated here, originated there. And ultimately what it does is it takes away it originally coming from God. I want to point out something to you and that is everything that we know in our hearts is there because God put it there. 